afternoon and welcome and thank you so much for joining our Resilience Matters today. Alison and myself are thrilled today to be Michael, joined by Michael Allison and Michael's the Operations Director of Roma Finance and is going to share all his wonderful insights on um, not just finance but resilience uh, and mindset. So welcome Michael. Good afternoon and thank you very much for having me. Um, really Pleasure. looking forward to this. Thank you Alison. Brilliant. So tell us a bit about yourself, Michael. Yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm Michael Allison. I'm the operations director for Roma. I'm, I'm 43. So that means I've been I've, I've been working for, well, I'd, I'd say working for over 20 years, but probably I've, I've been really working for 20 years before that I was a bit too young to uh, to base on a career. But yeah, so I'm um, currently working at Roma Finance. We're a um, development finance and bridging finance company um, based out in Manchester. Um, and we deal in the unregulated space of working with people who are looking to make money from um, from property. Um, and my role broadly is to oversee the um, change IT um, from, from the point of the application coming into the business to the customer paying us back. So all your standard lending departments, underwriting, credit, etc. So, um, yeah, I've been in finance now for roughly around um, 18 of those 20 years but before that when I left school my first job was I was a student nurse and that's, yeah. that's the fact that not many people know yeah. so in, in, no in 1996 I was on a scheme called project 2000 mm -hmm. uh, so I was 17 and a half um, and I was working as a nurse for, for a few years wow Bit of a change I know I should, I, maybe I should have mentioned that before we uh, before we started the podcast <laughs> Well, I think it, a lot of my, family, you know, my dad, um, my, my dad was 40 years as a specialist mental health nurse. My mum runs care homes. So it's all all in our blood, I guess. So I gave it a try yeah. and it, it wasn't quite for me. So I, th I thought I sort of find my way into finance instead. But the ethos of, of like good mental health, and that that is still with you. We can tell from our conversations. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And you know what? In, in nursing, it, there's so many skills that I learned at such a young age, like interpersonal skills, compassion, empathy, that have really stood me in good test um, throughout my uh, throughout my working life. Yeah, and I, and I know from our conversations, you know, how you support your team and lead your team and your operations unit is an accolade to that. You know, um, so so tell us a little bit about that, and you know your your ethos on that. Yeah, I, th I think everything for me always starts with colleague engagement. Uh, and I firmly believe that colleague engagement is not a management tool. It's a barometer of your business and your people and the work that you need to do as a leadership function to make sure that they've got the tools in which they, that they need to succeed in their role, not for the business goals, in their role and what they want to achieve. Um, so we do a lot of work in the engagement space. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, just clear communication. I think it's it's that moment when you realise that the people you're working with are adults, mm -hmm. and actually, adults like to be talked to like adults. You shouldn't hide yeah. anything back and think, oh, we shouldn't say this or should we say that? Should we share it? Let's share it. We're all adults. As long as yeah. we're all clear about what that business goal is, communication, collaboration, and, and working with people to get the best that they can or be the best that they can. Mm. It, it is really key because that's the strong foundations you know we, we lend money as a business and so does mm. every other lender in our space mm. this is about how we do it and how we do it we should be doing it through our through our colleagues you know we have a people people strategy we want to attract and retain the best talent and we want mm. them to deliver the best that they can and that doesn't necessarily mean staying in the role that they're in now other opportunities to grow careers within our business Mm. And the end of those careers might not be in our business. You know, we've got to be yeah. brave enough to know that not everyone's going to stay with you forever. Yeah. It's about making sure that they've got the right environment that whilst they're with you, they're delivering the best that they can and they're growing. Yeah. So that's certainly that's one of the key things that we're looking to do at Roma. Yeah. And, and that's interesting, isn't it? Because I think we've all worked for leaders as well, where they can feel threatened by their, mm. their team, you know, and actually having that nice, diverse team and helping them get new skills and move around the business or externally for the greater good you know they can feel threatened so you know how how do you do that you know how, what's your thoughts on that you've got to feel energized by it you know it, it is it, like i said 20 years ago it would have been when i was first starting out and i think i first became a team leader in the early 20s well 
the way I did it was different than the 43 year old um, you know people in the office at that time who were in leadership positions and it meant something different to me so you've got to feel energized by what these people want to do what they want to mm -hmm. deliver you've got to listen to it and learn yourself mm -hmm. you just got to be authentic yeah. you know yeah. at the end of the day the people you're working with could be higher than you in two five ten years and that's great because if you can play a part in, in them delivering that career for them and for their families mm -hmm. that that's that, you know that that's just as great as the results that they're giving you there and then there's no point feeling threatened, is there? You know, I think we're all there to deliver for the business, but also to make sure that we're working together collaboratively as a team. Mm. And that's interesting, that authentic leadership, you know, how, how, you know, that authenticity, you know, and showing that vulnerability, you know, how, how do you do that and what are the benefits of that? You do it by, by being yourself. Mm. Don't, don't, read, don't read the one minute manager and the monkey. Or move my cheese, or ever read walking on a morning completely yeah. different. Yeah. And I that that means sometimes how people mm. for some people they'll love a big pat on the back in front of everyone in the office and this well done for this bit piece of work mm. or brought up to the front in a team meeting to say fantastic. That's great, but don't think that the other 17, 18 people want that. They want oh, recognition yeah. in a different way. They want feedback in a different way. You've got to know the individual. And, mm -hmm. and, and back to that. the emphasis is on me as the leader working within that team. My role, being the leader doesn't mean I get to tell everyone to, what to do. That, mm -hmm. That's not what a leader is. Being a leader means that I understand what people need to deliver mm -hmm. the goal. And that's mm. it. My role doesn't make me any better than anybody else within that team. It just means that my bandwidth is to understand what everybody needs, what skills, training, feedback, how they like to be taught to, how they, you know, how, what the learning style is. That's leadership. Do they understand the overall goal? How do they contribute to that goal? It, it, that, that's the whole, the whole piece for me. And if you do that right and you do it consistently and you do it time and time again with that person, that they start to open up and you 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 yourself you show your vulnerability you, you know you show when you're happy you tell people when you're disappointed mm -hmm. you tell people when we've missed it you give them the feedback you don't tell somebody else that they've done it you know you you are just open and honest that's how you create a team mm. um, you know that's how you, that's how you lead and that's how you be authentic and you know we can see all three of us we're all working from home today you know and and that is becoming um you know sort of hybrid working is becoming quite a common way of doing things so getting to know people can be harder can't it so how do you how do you do that how do you create you know you talked about engagement being the barometer how do you do that when you're not necessarily always in the same physical space with somebody yeah, I think the key in what you said there was hybrid working, although our HR directors told me to. She hates hybrid working and I get it, so we call it blended working. Blended working. Right? Blended working is so it. much nicer than <laughs> hybrid. But yeah, we, we offer, obviously, like everyone, um, traditionally finance was um, five days a week in the office, nine till 5.30 core hours. And then off you go and get stuck into the commuting and out of Manchester or wherever you're based. So like everyone the, the pandemic through you know flipped everything on its head but coming out of that we've recognized that there isn't that there is that opportunity for blended working we still mm. feel having an office presence is good so at roma we do a minimum of two days per week in the office and the reason we say minimum for some colleagues who have younger children or it just works for them or they live alone they want to do more than that they want to do yeah. three they want to do four um but for other colleagues you know we recognize that productivity has not been an issue trusting mm -hmm. trusting colleagues has not been an issue we're actually more successful over the last 12 months right now Rome is the most successful we've ever been so we know that we can operate at home or in the office it's about when you're in the office we as the as the business need to make sure that we're adding value to the mm -hmm. colleague for coming in um, yeah. and that sounds a bit total 360 for it used to be it used to be people should be grateful they should be yeah. on a job sit down at your desk but people prove they can work from anywhere and when you're about to add on and layer in a two-hour commute you know an hour in an hour back mm -hmm. for some people having to iron the clothes the night before you know get back the lunch <laughs> get the lunch money worry about dropping the kids off yeah. you've got to make sure when people are in the mm -hmm. office we actually know that we're not going to be as productive because mm -hmm. you've lost that bit of time people have got one eye on the clock because they've got to go and we get that and we support that 
but it's the conversations that happen within the office. There's, 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 there's people are making a real poor effort of this. Perhaps some, you know, when you read the Alan Sugars on Twitter of the world, etc., yeah. making a real poor effort of articulate collaboration. Listen, when by coming in the office, it doesn't mean that someone from collections is magically going to work with someone from sales and they're going to come up with a barnstorming idea for the business. Mm -hmm. Collaboration p potentially means a three minute conversation about Married at First Sight Australia, where mm -hmm. everybody's chipping in about that because that's the conversation that people aren't having at home. Yeah. They're not having that. Are you okay? Are you sure you're all mm -hmm. right? Or mm -hmm. I, I like that shirt. I like that, you know, in that bit of yeah. reaffirmation mm -hmm. because. The one thing I always, I always think is that at work, is the only time I'm Michael Allison. I'm not Dad. I'm not Michael. I'm not the guy who puts the bins out every Thursday. I'm not the, <laughs> the head chef of the household. You know, I'm not all his dad who drops her off at school. I'm not Tara's fella who who buys the stuff. I, I'm I'm Michael Allison. And people yeah. actually, when they talk to me, they're only actually concerned about me. Mm -hmm. so, they, they don't they don't come up to me and say. Michael, I, I, enough about you. How's your daughter? What's your daughter doing? Yeah. Whereas when it, when I talk to my mum on the phone, she wants to know about my daughter first, and Mrs. Second, and me there. <laughs> <laughs> so we we, lo we lose out on that sometimes at home because then the communication that we get is all work. We're being yeah. really productive, but we're doing all work, and work is in our home. Yes. You know? yeah. So the one hour commute either way, I, I mean, I think I'm not sure the traffic in Ipswich and in Birmingham, but traffic in Manchester is dreadful. You know, it's <laughs> dreadful. It's awful. Yeah. So it's a real bind. But if somebody's in the office and they can go home and say, you know what, by being in today, mm -hmm. I got to speak to people I've not spoken to mm -hmm. uh, for a while. We got some information back from the business. You know, we should be using that as the opportunity to do stand up huddles, give people this is where we're tracking against our KPIs. Uh, I got I got a chance to listen to somewhere, meet a new starter face to face. Mm -hmm. That's adding value more than the metrics that you put out so we've got yeah. to expect that our metrics might shrink a little bit that day mm -hmm. but our team and our colleagues will get more from it because they'll start to build mm -hmm. that sense of workplace community yeah mm -hmm. i think you're right and there's a point you mentioned earlier you know as well about bringing your work into your home that that home and work line comes a little bit blurred doesn't it with the blended working and and that's quite tricky to manage in itself you know can cause quite a lot of stress and feeling like you're always on it is and you know what we've got to do we can't reward it we can't re we can't keep mm. rewarding it because people think that that's what good looks like mm. what we actually need to do if you see an email come in from somebody at half past seven the first question you should say to that person is why are you working till half past mm. seven and understand and what they might turn around because we have flexible hours um so we people can maybe start a bit later finish a bit later if they turn around and say well listen what it is i logged off and i did something and i logged back on and tied up mm. okay let's not make it a habit if somebody then turns around and says mm. i just got so much on that's a warning sign would you leave yeah. someone in the office would you leave somebody in the office on the ho on their own at 7 30 at night mm. Mm. Would you ex and pre-pandemic, would you have expected people to be sat in the office till 7.30 at night? And if the answer to that is no, why is it acceptable for them to be sat at home at seven, working till 7.30 at night? Yeah. And then mm. that's when you've got to walk back and say, is this a resource issue? Or is this a, a coaching and development issue for that individual? Because if you've got a really engaged staff, engaged colleagues, if you've got talent who cannot get consistently get through the work they've got each day and having to work later you've got a resource issue yeah. you don't have you don't have engaged staff because everyone's staying late you've got a resource yeah. issue you need to support them and you need to identify that so it's you know rmd said to me and again authenticity they live it and now i live it now i know everybody else lives it work is third your health is first then your family and then work mm -hmm. and i think we've got we've got to understand that the impact that work can have on an individual if we are ex accepting acceptance soon as becomes expecting yeah you know, <coughs> you know if, every, if everyone used to finish at five and now you're getting out till mm -hmm. six you'll be expecting people work till six if you don't address it or they'll be mm -hmm. thinking you'll be expecting them to 
Mm. So, just be, okay, but like I said before, we're all adults. Have a conversation. Mm. Why are you working till half seven? Yeah, and and there is that leading by example. You know, we've had it come up in some training before. Where people say, and well, my boss will say, "Oh, don't work late," but I still get emails at half past seven. So there is something about you said that leading by example, and actually, what you described there is that culture you're creating as well. If you're consistently telling this to your company, then actually that gives you permission. I think that's a great culture to work by. Yeah, definitely. I've, I've always been a big believer in, you know. I go to work and I work hard uh, on my career because for the benefit of my family and for myself, that's it. Mm -hmm. So if that all of a sudden, if work starts encroaching in your family time, then th th that's the only way that you can get to where you're going to be. It's not delivering the outcome that, you, that you're that you actually working towards. Yeah. If I started having to work all day Saturday because I had to get through all my work consistently, and bear in mind, there will be occasions when something crops up. You might have a big project or something. I, I, Certainly in my role, I've got to take that. You know, you might have to t go for dinners and all this kind of stuff. But if it's consistent and then you get to the point where you on I only saw my daughter for a couple of hours at the weekend, mm. then I, the, the balance is all wrong, isn't it? Yeah. And and that's that's me thing. But you've got to bear in mind is that everybody within within the business will have the same pressures. They're working for our reason. Mm. Um, so it's just understanding that and supporting people through it. And for me being blind to capacity is is one of the one of, one of the business weaknesses because it always catches up with you mm. Mm. definitely and one of the themes i noticed that you talk about through all this conversation actually is around trust mm. you know you talk about trust from working from home having open and honest conversations actually being authentic and even saying if you don't know you know it sounds like that trust is so innately important to how we work and as a leader or, or through life um but i think that's kind of like what a lot of this hinges on it does it, and, and you know that all starts from recruitment mm. all starts and having the right conversations at recruitment with people because when people send you a cv they're only they're only telling you the things that they want you to know so mm. it's get, the, the best questions in, in as part of your recruitment are more about the individual themselves more mm -hmm. about how they how they face up to certain aspects because you can teach people to do most jobs i think we said before mm -hmm. didn't we? if somebody if somebody else has done it anyone can yeah you know, you can, you, with training and development what you're actually looking for is would that person if they were sat at home would they be able to work would they would they be able to put the hand up if they were stuck would mm -hmm. they be able to ask for help would they be able to help somebody else would they be able to you know put the right image of our business to the to the external world when they're interfacing with them that that's more important sometimes mm -hmm. than what's even on the tv sometimes we recruit people for for the per we, we we're more interested in the person than actually what they've done because that that's the mm -hmm. bit that's going to help when you add them into a team that's going to make all the difference you might have a great cv but the person you get that you know if your question is right they're, they're untrustworthy mm -hmm. or or the, there are somebody who you know the way that they come across in the interview you know that won't gel with the rest of the team so mm -hmm. it's going to upset the apple cart i think is the, the, the phrase mm -hmm. so, <laughs> trust trust is something that is earned what is mm -hmm. my, my granddad used to say trust is the hardest thing to earn and the easiest thing to lose, to lose. Yeah. yeah yeah and i think if you're open you're honest you're clear and you're talking adult to adult straight from the beginning people understand the parameters and boundaries and you have the right pathway to competency the right recruitment the right training and development for individuals the right quality frameworks in place you can easily build up that piece of trust yeah yeah totally. i think too many people go into this thing starting from a place of distrust and working backwards why not start from a place of trust until you prove wrong that that's yeah. really the, the, the best way to do it because that way you're giving people that benefit of the doubt that when you get up in the morning and you get dressed and you've got bills to pay, you're going to deliver your best at work. Why don't we all start from that position instead of yeah. thinking everybody's out to swindle the company, you know, and, and, and get away with it. Start from that position. It's a lot easier to leave because you'll find that most people are that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, as you say, it's how we think, isn't it? If, if we think, you know, we trust everybody, we, we can work together as a team, you know, it's created first in your mind and then it happens in real life. So if you think in that positive frame of, of, of reference, then 
you create that and you create an environment for your team where they can create that too. Yeah, definitely. And ultimately, it all delivers for the business. Yeah. It links into the business goals. You know, and I think that's first and foremost, we're all there. If the, the business has to be successful for us to continue to be successful. So we clear business metrics. That's that's what we're going to achieve. My role and the role of the people I work with is, is how we're going to deliver it. Yeah. And, yeah. And the how. And doing it in just, a sustainable way. 100%. How is just, just as much about how you, your engagement plan, your people strategy, your people plan, working with your colleagues, understanding who, who is, you know, talent management and all that piece. That's just as important as your product mix, your systems, your yeah. controls, because every, hu- you know, one of my favorite phrases, every human touch should be an intelligent touch. And in the world that we're moving towards in technology, we're going to be doing more and more technology. So mm. every time a, a, we, we, we rely on a human to do something in the process, it's got to be that intelligent touch. Well, actually, yeah. it should also be your brand ambassador touch. Mm. So that person that, you know, nobody ever goes on to FIFO or on to Trustpilot and says, that system was great. Mm. You know, nobody ever goes on to TripAdvisor and says that online um, ordering, the, the website was fantastic. It's the mm-hmm. people that get the yeah. feedback. So if you've got a culture where people are at the center of it, they're your brand ambassadors. And if the business is achieving its goals, that's your win-win. Yeah, yeah. totally. It, it, the business all comes back. But actually, more to the point, nobody wants to leave. I mean, I think if I worked in an environment like that, why would you? you know, full of trust and there was something you said earlier that I really love that you um you check in with the guys going how are we feeling today you know creating that psychological safety of being to be themselves and open and honest about how they're feeling yeah and, and you know what as well it's not just asking it it's watching it mm. it's watching so if somebody normally comes in and says good morning they don't that day you've got to clock it mm. I know back to my role being the leader in the in the department doesn't mean I'm better than anyone it means I, I'm doing a different role to somebody. And my role is about the, the people. If somebody walks in, walks past everyone and say, good morning, you think, well, either I've got somebody who's disengaged and never speaks to anyone, or somebody's just gone quiet. So, and then then you've got to then factor in, well, how does this person like to be communicated to? Mm. You know, is this is this one where I'm gonna have to drop a quick email or a Teams, or is this, have you got five minutes, you have a coffee? You know, and checking in with people. I think I said before, if, if somebody walked in hunched over, with a bad back, within an hour, you'd have a desk assessment, you'd order them a new chair, you'd hire up the screen and all that stuff. But well, we should be doing that if somebody is behaving differently to what they would normally behave. Because you can't control external factors. But you can't control the environment they're walking into. Mm. It, may, it may be that you may even need to agree to give them an emergency holiday that day and reassign mm. the work because you don't know what that piece of, of, of what, what's happened outside to in. Or... You might just have to listen to them get off the chest and then they go from yeah. being a four out of ten to a six out of ten and they can at least move through the day um so it's it's massively important but you know checking in with people mm. you know, even the first time i do a one-to-one i always love to say to people how do you like these doing mm. it's not my it's not my meeting i'm a facilitator mm. how do you want your one-to-one do you want it to be all stats based do you want it to be you know this is this this is the bit we need to cover but what do you want what are you looking to get from this? And that's, you've got to remember, everyone's got a different reason for coming to work because it's personal to them. Some mm-hmm. people, you know, they, they want to build a career. Some people, they want to save for a house. Some people, they just want to come in and get paid because that's, that's work is actually fourth on their list. It's not even in the top three. Well, some people, you know, they, they want to try and try something different, do be something different. So understand it and create the platform. And as long as you're clear with them, well, if you deliver this, We'll do this. Mm-hmm. That, that, it's all about mm-hmm. building the right environment. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Michael? You know, has there been a situation where your resilience has been tested, or how do you keep resilient? Mm. Well, I think if you ask this question to most people, uh, in f- certainly for the next two years, we're all going to go back to the pandemic, aren't we? <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. For me, that, that was the most. I remember it was. You could feel the news changing. And it just sort of snowballed out of, out of nowhere. And obviously in finance, we're, we're reliant on people buying properties. Mm. <laughs> we're reliant on people moving houses or moving tenants in or tenants paying or or building houses and, and all that kind of stuff. It stopped overnight. And we went from 
20 for, for me 20 years of, of working in an office mm. to being sat at home on a laptop i'm thinking mm. and then everybody else was sat at home and and what you what you did find is people looked at, but again think about your role people look to you for for what's going on what's the next steps what's the answer and you think oh, why is everyone asking me all this stuff you know and i just mm. remember one day my, my missus worked at the same place at the, at the time different floors um and then my daughter, obviously, no school, she was sent home. So there was three of us in our old house. And we were it, it just felt like a pressure cooker. I remember one day I said, mm. I can't take it. I walked out into the garden. And I'm not an emotional person, but you know, really. I'm, I normally keep my emotions quite regulated, but quite laid back. I, I just, I, I shouted, just get, my daughter came out. I said, go away, go back in the house. I felt terrible for doing it. And I, I could feel tears coming just because all these people wanted answers. I didn't have any answers myself. I didn't know what, what, what the mm -hmm. questions was. You know, I went from going shopping to wiping all the all the food down before you put it in the cupboards. And <laughs> mm -hmm. and I didn't know what was... And then people are asking me about their livelihood, their jobs, because as much as I was feeling it, I, I, the department I had at the time, 50-odd people, they were all feeling it as well. And I remember I did this huddle on the telephone. Um, and unfortunately, we had to put some people on furlough. I remember saying, oh, it's furlough. It's not farewell. And as I'm saying it, I, I found myself welling up. And I'm sat in this box room in my house. And I'm, I, I, I've never felt so alone at work. Mm. Because I had no reassurance from myself. And I'm just guessing. Because nobody had been in that position. So I really found it tough. Mm. And um, so I apologised to my daughter, first and foremost, and give her a hug. And that's when I remembered that actually business is third there's a pandemic yeah. going on out there you know i'm the lucky one all i'm trying to do is make sure people are in the right place and they've got the right equipment and they can work i'm not waiting outside a hospital because i can't see anybody you know i'm, mm -hmm. I'm not i've not got a loved one ill so let's put things in perspective so mm -hmm. when you talk about building resilience sometimes you need to just give yourself a reality check but you need to let it out first and then when yeah. you let it out you almost i almost felt a bit embarrassed I felt embarrassed that I got so worked up over something when I turned the news on and there was thousands of people dying all over the world. And all I'm bothered about is if somebody over there has got a laptop and this person's asking me this question, that work was just, it, it was just a thing we needed to do. We mm. actually needed to speak to the humans behind it and, mm. and understand how it is for them. So dealing with resilience for me, or, you know, being resilient is sometimes let yourself be a bit, let, just let it come out because that's yeah. the natural bit but then analyze what's just come out where does it sit and is, is it still really bad and if it's really bad you need to be speaking to the right people there and then mm. but if it comes out you think, well actually in retrospect it's this in retrospect it's that just start to dissect it from there because mm. and don't don't shout at your daughter to leave <laughs> you alone. bless you but it is like you say perspective stepping back Sometimes just stepping back out of your thoughts and um, gaining that perspective and maybe that gratefulness piece that does help to build. It does. Thoughts. You know, but, but my nan, she, she used to say this saying, and um, I never understood it until the pandemic. Well, and she'd say, my, my nan was a lovely lady, and she'd say, oh, nan, something's happened. But she'd, well, listen, if it doesn't go dark at five, it goes dark at six. In other words, it is what it is. Something's always yeah. at the end of the day. It gets dark. It doesn't matter if five yeah. o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock. It's going to happen. So some things are sure and, and just crack on. So I thought, you know what? If you don't go dark at five, it's dark at six, yeah. and that's that, that's it. And you work back from that. Uh, and like I say, if it's outside of your control, you should have built the right team around you. Yeah. Um, surround yourself with the right people that you can share it and get it off, yeah. get it off your chest. Yeah. And, and, and work with them so yeah it's um but it's an ongoing thing you know who knows what the next piece is that causes resilience you know but it's it's a continuous thing isn't it and if, if again the role of the leader is to be the calm head yeah you know calm seas didn't make good sailors so you've just mm. got to go ahead and, and and work out what you need to do to, to get through the right waters mm. love that calm seas don't make good sailors I think we might be using that, Mike. We might be using that one, yeah. yeah <laughs> um, you know what? I can't believe we've run out of time, and I know that you moved in 
pandemic and change jobs and then we've just run out of time but um but michael maybe we'll have some more insights in the future but it's fascinating as ever i knew our time would go so quickly so um but thank you so much we really yeah. appreciate you doing this and sharing it with everybody no i really, um, I really enjoyed it thank you very much for your time that's nice, brilliant. Um, so I'll just um, let the viewers know that obviously the series we, we run weekly and if any of our network does want to get involved, then please do contact us through our website, which is I've got this .co.uk. Um, also on our website, we've got 101 ways to build resilience, which is all free. So some top tips there if anybody wants to download them and use them. But until then, take care. Bye. Bye.